College Gym Bits fan going live on YouTube. This is another full gymnastics meet. Well, I think somebody already posted this on YouTube. But this is from ESPN3, NCAA Women's Gymnastics, Minnesota at Nebraska. I think it was from last weekend, the meet. Okay, I'm going to hit the play button. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of college gymnastics in the Big Ten. We're at the debating I think center. I have to bring the table Nebraska back. The 16th ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers host the 18th ranked Minnesota Golden Gophers. Hello, everyone. I'm John Roethlisberger alongside one of America's most decorated gymnasts ever, Alicia Sacramoni Quinn. Alicia, great to be back with you again. On paper, this looks to be a great matchup. Number 18 versus number 16. Tell us what we can expect tonight. Minnesota remains undefeated in the Big Ten. Last week, they had seven athletes set eight new season high scores. That attributed to them scoring over 49 team scoring each event, which is absolutely huge for them. And a lot of that had to do with their standout star, Lexi Rammer. She's Big Ten Gymnast of the Week. She has won five straight all-around titles, which is unheard of. And then we're moving over to Nebraska. They had a tough loss last week to Michigan. You know, well known to be their biggest rival. They're looking to come back here at their home crowd, get the scores rolling, and they're hoping that Addie De Jesus gets a little more credit on that ball. Last week she did a beautiful stuff one and a half twister chango and was robbed. So hopefully she can get that ten point out here tonight. So I think for Minnesota, you nailed it. Lexi Rambler, she is a game changer for that team. And to come in here and beat Nebraska would be huge for them because Nebraska, they've been somewhat dominant over the Golden Gophers, Gophers over the years, 33 and 11 and 1. Minnesota looking for that 12th win. That Nebraska won this matchup last season as well. Nebraska, a tough beat here at the Devaney Center. The standings in the Big Ten, you alluded to it, Alicia. Minnesota is still undefeated at the top of the conference, along with Michigan at 3-0. Ohio State, by the way, they were undefeated until last night. They get beaten as well. So there's just two undefeated remaining. Minnesota hoping to hold on to that here in Nebraska this weekend. Should be a, a good one. So the home team, Nebraska Ford Huskers, there's the new head coach, Heather Brent. She's pumping that team up. They will start on the vault. There is their lineup. That column on the right is interesting because that is experience, and that's how many times those gymnasts have actually appeared in the lineup for Nebraska. You can see very early in that lineup a lot of young athletes. At the end there, Sienna Cross and Taylor Hausch, and they represent the veterans on the Cornhusker squad. Tonight, Nebraska's whole vaulting lineup will be performing the Chango one and a half, which is huge. There's not many, if any, other school that can maybe decide Oklahoma that every athlete on their roster does a 10 point of start value. This will be very interesting, no doubt. For Kaylee Quinn, it was her first time competing the one and a half. She did not get her feet underneath her enough to be able to make that landing. A little bit shoulder angle on the table, just opened up too soon. That arm got lost behind her. It's an unfortunate start, but hey, it's a difficult ball. You gotta pick yourself up, try again, you know. Nebraska's taking a step in the right direction. If you can get a 10.0 on every star value involved, that's huge. That is huge, and that was Kaylee Quinn, as you mentioned, freshman out of Rockaway, New Jersey. Got a little too aggressive on that landing. Now we look to Minnesota in the uneven bars. They have some youth as well. Nice. Kristen Aglia, starting from job for Minnesota. She's a junior out of Chanhass in Minnesota, classic gymnastics coach by Brian Huff. This is an important event for them to start on. It's been a consistent event for Minnesota, and it's got a lot of high scoring potential. Knocking over the low bar, hitting that handsome high bar, blind change to Pike Yeager. Small feet separation to immediate shoot over. Connection points for connecting those two skills. Back up on the high bar. Blind change goal, a little bit late, hitting that hands into immediate double back to a stick. Connections are great there, but we're just missing form spots here and there. It's going to be quarter attempt for this, a quarter attempt for that. But she had some nice 
skill within this routine, that big Jaeger, small leg separation right when she catches. And then you can see that line change will not finish him directly in a handstand. There's going to be a deduction for that, but the dismount was great. Kristen Qualia does what the first person is supposed to do, get up and hit. Now, this will be interesting, Alicia, because they're scheduled to do 6 10 on balls, but they have the first gym, gymnast miss as Megan Versalis Pollard gets ready to go. Will they all still do the one and a half is my question. Up onto the table. Another sat down one and a half. This is a little bit unfortunate because I watched her warm up and she stuck it cold. This is just like going too hard for that stuck landing. A lot of distance, not the best height ratio from the table. She needs more rotation and that, that vault didn't have it. So it's a very solid car. Comes up short again. That was the first time for Kayla Quinn and her solid car to do the one and a half in competition. Unfortunately, that is one that they will not want to remember. Now back over to the uneven bars. Minnesota hit their first routine. Kristen Qualia gets a 9.75. Now this is Hannah Milmark. She is a sophomore out of Boulder, Colorado, of airborne gymnastics. Only competed bars twice this year. So some youth in this Minnesota lineup as well. We'll talk about that throughout the competition. When an athlete's competing on bars, judges are looking for it, those hit handstands, nice, clean, tight form, and then, of course, that stuck landing. It's the last thing they see, but it is the first thing they remember. Moving between the bars, the beautiful bail of handstand. Hitting that handstand on the high bar. Line change forward, tap it late. A direct connection to double back. Soft landing on the double, but she was fighting for it to be a stick. It looked like she was coming down and it was going to be a stick and she gave away that hop. You have within 10 degrees to get credit for hitting that handstand. So you can see she was right on point, but after that pirouette, she was late and crooked towards the side. So she will get a reduction for that, but just needed to get a little bit more precise on that double back dismount. Now the pressure is on Nebraska. Monica Djokovic. She is a sophomore and fusion gymnastics. Actually, assistant coach Mike Perenia's gym club at the with his wife. A lot of these belts have lots of distance, not so much height, and that deviated from the center line of where you would like to land. I think the excitement of everybody doing a one and a half kind of got into the minds of these athletes, and you're seeing them not do these vaults that they warmed up well, but not are, they aren't competing the same way. And the pressure is on because in women's gymnastics, you can't drop that low score. Up. However, when your first two gymnasts have falls already, that means you are going to count a miss. And that puts a lot of pressure on the rest of the field. Now back over to bars in Minnesota, Anna Loper. Sophomore out of Bluffton, South Carolina. Following in 9.825. Anna Loper. Anna to a Maloney. To a Caps off of. Pirouette. Back up onto the high bar now. Short hand stand there. Line change uh, fighting to get it over. Swing half, trying to cover up her mistake to immediate double back. So she's going to lose bonus points, which will ultimately affect her start value. So I don't think she'll be able to start from a 10.0 with the way the routine she competed. So Minnesota gives one back. Now again, they will look to drop that score. While the Nebraska Corn Huskers try to stick a few balls here to get things right. And this is the one you mentioned in the open. Had nearest to Hastu. She nailed this ball last week. She was only a freshman. They need a big score here. She warmed up really well. Let's see how she competes. There you go. Looking for that stick. Small hop. Great ball. Where they get her is a little, little bit of form in her legs. If they're being really nitpicky, good height, good distance. You can see that left knee just bend slightly before she's approaching that landing. And that's where the judges, who didn't want to give her the 10 last week, gave her that deduction. So Nebraska gets things right. Monica Djokovic, a 9.65 in the third spot for Nebraska. So they're going to count a score in the 9.65s and also a score of 9.15 for sure, assuming they hit the rest of their ball. So that is a bad place to be early in this competition for Nebraska. Now here we go with Chiari Salas. Spot for Minnesota. Up on the high bar, short handstand, bail the handstand, loose when her hands catch the bar in the midsection. So short on the handstand, the high bar, blind change. Big release move, nice height over the bar, good form. 
struggle a bit with those hip cast hamstrings, which is unfortunate because those short hamstrings add up. Double A, small hop backwards. Nice hip routine. Again, we're going to see small quarter tenths, quarter tenths from the judges. The big working over the bar. Very nice release move. So good routine from Tiari Salas on the loper, by the way, 9.7 for her bar team, which is a little bit surprising with that mistake. Now back over to Vault. This is Sienna Krause. She is a senior. She is one of the leaders of this Nebraska squad. Okay, come on to the table. Nice one and a half. A lot of power. Decent size hop forward with beautiful form. The legs were perfectly squeezed together. Toes pointed in the air. Up onto the table, squeeze perfectly like a pencil. That's amazing. Great, great form. Beautiful, great distance. She just brought her head around a moment sooner. She would have been able to have a better control in that landing. And here's the Jesus, the 9.825 for her ball. Now, Lexi Ramler, the game changer. Not seeing any bars. Maloney, she packs up though. Great form, beautiful toe point. Again, Lewin, toe handstand, full twisting, double back. Wow. She had a little bit soft legs, it almost like a body roll coming back up. You know, it almost looked like she was a little under-rotated, but she absorbed it long enough and was able to stay in one spot. Poise of a, of a veteran, and she's only a sophomore. That was great. Great form, very unique skill, you don't see it very often. That toe handstand to immediate full twist and double back, and then the whoop and got it. Great dismount, strong, strong set for the loafers. Sienna Krause got a 985. This is Taylor Hauschen trying to finish with the big one. Big one to have. A lot of power. Those last two balls for Nebraska were great. They just need to get those landings under control, and at this point in the season, you would like to see more control. Big distance, a lot of height. So you don't like to see Nebraska make those mistakes on the ball, obviously, but it's in the middle of the season. It's not the postseason yet. Maybe a good thing to get this out of the way, get some experience with this lineup. Granted, the first two athletes had never competed the line and a half before, so you have to give them a little bit of room over. But that lo lower half of the lineup, they should be focusing more on fine-tuning and landing. This is Ivy Blue. She is a junior. Number 13 in the country. Actually tied for 13 with her team at Lexi Lambert, who's 49.375 for her team. Ivy is a beautiful ball worker. Her warm ups were absolutely stunning. She's doing a great spot. Oh, Ooh, now that's, that's an error. That would be a mistake I have never seen before. Wow. The way she has to take it, it's not my memory fault either. Bar like that. Double up to a stick. Had to make up for the almost fall. What do you think the judges do on that? I've never seen a gymnast. It's a deduction for sure. A 10 probably. What do you think? Half a 10 if they're being generous. The arm swing is what gets you. If you just stood up fuck straight, it's not a big deal. You might get a delay, but mix up for this beautiful kick to open double leg. So we've got one rotation in the books. And it was an up and down rotation for Nebraska. Minnesota looks steady, but when we come back, we're gonna talk about the changes in the women's program here at Nebraska. Some big time upgrades for the Cornhuskers. Nebraska Cornhuskers, Nebraska, one rotation in and they had a rough start. Minnesota with a commanding lead. You never see that in women's gymnastics where you almost have a one-point lead after one rotation. Nebraska with a little bit of work to do. But for these Nebraska Cornhuskers, this season is all about change and things that are becoming new for this program. On the top of the list, new head coach Heather Brink. She just had the interim tag taken off less than two weeks ago. She takes over for the legendary coach Dan Kendon, who had such a proud tradition here. She's got a great tradition as a gymnast here in Nebraska, was the first NCAA all-around champion for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. She now takes the helm as head coach. But Alicia, there's a lot more going on here than just that. The very building we are in right now, the Devaney Center, had a $20 million renovation. They have five luxury suites that overlook the competition floor and new video boards where you can see replays, score updates. And that's not even the biggest change that's going to be happening for this program. They have a brand new training facility that is in the works that is scheduled to open in January of 2020. 20,000 square feet in training space that will be shared with the men's team as well. But there's going to be new training rooms, new meeting rooms, offices, 
everything is going to be state of the art and a real big pull for athletes that are coming into this program. And that is going to be big for this team, but also for the Big Ten Conference. The SEC, they're kind of the model. They're the toughest conference in women's gymnastics, and they have these amazing facilities at LSU, at Georgia, at Auburn. The Big Ten has never won a national championship. And it's things like this, like a new facility here at Nebraska, that can attract that talent that might just get the first national championship for the Big Ten Conference and this school, of course. That could be exactly what they're looking for, to bring in and entice new recruits to be like, this is what you could get if you're an athlete here with Nebraska. It is something that is a game changer for this program. It's going to be interesting to watch this program. After one rotation, once again, the Nebraska's in an early hole, 48.35, Minnesota 49.175. As they go to the second event, Minnesota will be on vault. Junior Paige Williams will try to keep things rolling for the Golden Gophers. Meanwhile, for Nebraska, they go to the uneven bars. Number 23 in the country, Sienna Krause, will try to get things right for the Cornhuskers. up here in women's gymnastics unfortunately it doesn't look like it on the scorecard at the moment Minnesota Minnesota holding a .825 lead after one Alicia what does Nebraska have to do to get this right Nebraska needs to basically just kind of be per picture perfect moving here on out they are moving to bars which has been a struggle for them so hopefully that it doesn't get in their heads and they get the best of themselves and make take themselves out of the game for Minnesota they kind of just need to keep on chugging you know just one more hit, consistent clean, no major errors. Now it's head coach Jenny Hansen in a huddle with her team against the Minnesota Hulk lineup. Minnesota's been a very consistent team this year. Jenny Hansen feels like this team can contend for a Big Ten championship. She feels like they can contend to be at the NCAA championships, be one of the final eight teams. They just need to start turning some of those consistent, decent scores into great scores, and they could be right there. Nebraska, I feel like, is more of an up-and-down team, but they have that same potential. So we will see as Kristen Qualia, junior out of Chair Nelson, gets ready to vault. And then lead off that ever-important lead-off spot. You get a couple hits early in the line, but just lets the rest of the line kind of bleed easier. Takes a little bit of that edge off. We saw Nebraska have trouble with their first two, and we'll see what happens with Minnesota. Minnesota is off the table. A nice pull. I would like to see her land with her chest up a little bit more on that landing, but she was looking for that stick. The enthusiasm meter was definitely at a, at a 10.0 on that one for sure. Oh, it was nice body form. She just picked it up. Then it would have been even better to able to stick that. So. It didn't start from a 10, but that score should still be better than what, unfortunately, Nebraska put up their first couple of balls. Now Nebraska over to bars. This is Kelly Chung Jr. out of Torrance, California. Matching up onto the high bar. I see a very youthful team early in the line for Nebraska. Caught that Jaeger a little bit close to the bar. Pat Sato, leg separation. that Hanson on the high bar. Double A. Just not enough tap swing in the before the dismount. Not the best landing. With the release move we'll see here again. She pulls it in and just you never want to grab with like T-Rex arms. <laughs> Ideally you want to have a good shoulder distance and grab full grip. Is that a technical term? It is now T-Rex arms. Look it up. That double A up. She needs a little bit more oomph to it. A little hit of feet higher before the release. Oomph and T-Rex arms. Let's go over to vault. Lexi Montgomery, sophomore from Colony, Texas. This is only her second time on vault this season. Tango pull. Small hop in place. Strong vault, not the most height and or distance we've seen on your tango pull, but it's a consistent hit. And that's what these teams need to keep chipping away to keep the lead that they have right now for Minnesota. Kristen Qualia at 9.75 in the leadoff spot for Minnesota. We'll wait, wait for Lexi Montgomery's score. Meanwhile, over on the uneven bar, Sarah Hargrove, freshman out of Henderson, North Carolina, gets ready to go waiting for Kelly Chung's score to come up. This is an event for Nebraska that they struggled a little bit with depth. They have some big routines, but if anybody has any injuries or if they need to switch up the lineup early in the season at least, they have not had a lot of options to go to. 
is currently ranked number 16 in the country in this event, which is respectable. Kelly Chung in 9.575, so it's a very low score for the first person run. Big Ray, nice form. Short on that handstand. Starter, compact Salto. So pure wet turn, it almost looked like she wasn't going to make it then. Lift it around at the end. Starter. So maybe it's a wrap. There you go, that's, that's what, what we needed. For. That's exactly what Nebraska needed to kind of get the ball rolling and build some momentum. The stalker, she has such a late leg close, which can affect the way she goes into her dismount, but she still manages to pull it out just fine and get that stick. So that 9575 with Kelly Chung in the first position for Nebraska is they definitely don't want to count. This is Ali Sonier from Minnesota. Now that your chain go full, small up, she had a decent sized shoulder angle on the table, which affects how high she's actually going to get up off the table. There you see it. It's just a flat vault, and the judges will take a deduction for that because they do want to see some good amplitude. Lexi Montgomery in 9.7, that's her seeding high. Allie Sonia waiting for her score. A little more conservative approach here from Minnesota than Nebraska on the vault. Back over two bars, this is Megan Michelle's car. Ready to go. Sarah Hargrove in 9.875. That is a career high for her. So something to build on over Silas Collin. Now just over the low bar. Short hands down on the high bar. Line change. Height behavior. Small leg separation to immediate shoot over or bail. And sitting on the high bar, line change full to immediate double back dismount. Stop landing. Not the cleanest routine. I'm going to say this will be like a 9.85, 9.875 type of score. But it's a hit. This is what Nebraska needs, this, especially in an event like this where they struggle. The connection between those two skills to the immediate double back from the blind change full. Teammates love it. They're so excited for it. Ali Sonier at 9.75. This is Kim Jones. Aggressive line to the table. Good height. Wow. Open that pull right up. Just a small pop step backwards. Face of the determination approaching that ground off onto the springboard. So, oh, so much time in the air. Knew exactly where she was. Trying to build on a 9.75 from Alex Sonier. That should be a huge number. Megan Grisella's car, by the way, a 9.9. .9. You called it, you said a 9.875. Alicia, it went a little higher than that, even as at nearest the Jesus. Now it's making a move here. Taking that hands on the high bar. Too big release move. A little bit sloppy feet, legs, out of control on that release move from high to low. Now it's the Alex Sonia car. Just a little bit more sloppy feet, legs, out of dismount it's hard from just a cast you don't have the giants to give yourself some extra power to go into the dismount so not the best landing there for the Jesus after Washington Arizona State on ESPN catch Sports Center with John Anderson and Kenny Mayne they'll recap Thunder Rockets with Jane Harden's 30 point streak on the line plus Jay Billis takeaways from number two Duke and number three Virginia as well as post fight reactions from USC 234 in Australia <laughs> Nice, your tango one and a half. Only oh, that small movement of the feet on the landing, but that was great. And that is the all-star Lexi Rambler, number 25 in the country on this event. Slight bend of those knees before she was anticipating that where her feet were going to land on that mat. But again, the judges don't have the exact same angles that we see, so that might be something that they aren't going to fully deduct. At nearest to Jesus for Nebraska on bars, a 9.8. Sienna Krauss. Top 25 gymnast on this event. Spider tip. Half turn, immediate finger. Small leg separation, but nice connection between those two skills. Good amount of bonus points for that. 
Saving momentum for the Houston Double Back. To a stick. That set turn to the salute should have happened a tad bit sooner because I think they're going to give her a deduction for that landing. Beautiful handstand. For the Wilder Kiss. Half turn. And then that Ginger. Finish the routine with a beautiful, difficult dismount and just needed to turn a little bit sooner so she didn't get credit for that step. This is Anna Walker following up what she ran with 9.875. What in the, oh, she was trying for that stick. Unfortunately, took that step backwards. And finished with a couple of big vaults, trying to crack that 9.9. Nine. It's always better on vault if you're la doing a front landing vault. You want to step forward because then it shows you have extra power. And when you step backwards, it's going to be more of a under rotation, not all the way around type situation that the judges are seeing. So Taylor Hauser was going to finish a bar rotation for Nebraska that has seen three career highs, including Sienna Cross's 9.925 moments ago. Ryan Chang four. Sisakacha. Nice hit handstand. Bail handstand. So we're making sure she hits that handstand on the high road before her dismount. Ready to release. Beautiful double leg to a stick. That's going to be a big score. So you do the math, Alicia. 9.925 for Sienna Krause. That looked perfect. Can we see our first 10? I think we might see a 10. This, look at that handstand. That's good form. The big release move. I haven't been understanding the judges' scores up till this point, but I feel like they, what I don't know what they're going to take away from her. That could be that could be our first ten as well this season. We haven't seen one. What will it be? So a Nebraska team, they rally big time in that rotation. We'll do the math when we come back, and when we come back, another edition of the Jane A Academy. We'll discuss dealing with the mid-season dog days of gymnastics. for every team in the NCAA. They have a very grueling class schedule, competition schedule, training schedule. They're traveling all the time. They have to battle fatigue. And that, those things all put together can lead to injuries, which is something that every team is trying to fight. So we asked some athletes and coaches to tell us what they do to try to counteract that. And the biggest thing they said in the gym, they wanted quality over quantity in the, the turns they're taking. They want to make sure what they're doing is going to be precise and clean and not waste time and extra turns and having extra wear and tear on your body. They want adequate rest and proper nutrition outside the gym so they're fueling their body to make sure everything they're doing outside is helping them inside. And then last and certainly not least is physical therapy, the prehab, the post-hat rehab. It is all about you know taking care of yourself. In my day, we did ice tubs up to your chest with new technologies. There's cryo chambers, float, float pools. It's a lot of uh, new stuff out there for these girls to help keep healthy. So, so much going on and such an important part of the year to stay healthy and so they're peaking at the right time, which is just around the corner in March. But, you know, we're talking about the athletes here, but nobody thinks of us, Alicia. I mean, what about our physical therapy? Nobody thinks of the needs of the commentators to feel fresh as well. In a cryo chamber, dog days of season. Maybe you think you might have come back, don't really know. Sean, how's your recovery going? Not good. It's not the cryo chamber that I had in mind. I'm ready to retire. You know we had to do it, right? I mean, you knew we could not resist. Why do I always get the short end of the stick? You're in the cool, high-tech cryo chamber, and I'm on the frozen tundra. I don't know, John, but one more thing that gets me ready for season, I get nostalgic. I like to look at family photos, and so I think we're going to pull up some family photos of here of the Roethlisberger family. Oh, Fred no. Roethlisberger, a legendary coach, 33 years as the Golden Gopher head coach, and then John's sister Marie, a four-time NCAA all-team American. She was a 1984 Olympic team alternate. She was an absolute rock star. And then, last and certainly not least, my favorite male gymnast of all time, Johnny R. You're such a liar. You are my favorite gymnast. Three-time Olympian, 1993 Nissan Award winner. John, you always give me all the credit for my accomplishments, but you, friend, are the winner here. You have I'm gonna, a long list. I'm going to get choked up. I'm going to get choked up. This is I, Why did you guys in a truck? You did that, and you surprised me. I'm going to get you for that one. 
Nebraska goes to the beat and they try to keep rolling with their senior Megan Schweighofer. Meanwhile, Minnesota trying to hold off the Cornhusker run. Anna Loper will lead the way for the Golden Gophers on that event. This team line up with a ton of experience, but the only way to get experience is, you know, throw them into the mix. So opening up with a huge roll in front of, very difficult. You don't see that very often. And I love it. I love how aggressive Nebraska's going to be on game with the skills they're choosing to put in. Nebraska back later with their experience on this event, starting off with a sophomore new freshman, but man, Michaela Curtis looking solid so far. <laughs> Check there. Stuck, round off one and a half. That was nice. I tell you what, we've seen Heather Brink on Dean twice now. She's always right there at the landing mat, willing her gymnast to stick that landing. That lead pass, the switch and switch, it's very difficult. You have to land and jump off that same leg. So if you're not really stabilizing through that your foot, ankle, and knee, you could take a little bit of a bobble like she did there. So now Minnesota, Rachel Cutler, she is a senior. There's also plenty of youth on this Minnesota team as well. Rachel is senior out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> Gosh, weird, Nebraska's competing in short sleeve leotards, and then I was like, no, Alicia, that's mesh. Just kidding. Opening up with a front layout, front fold. Talking to Coach Jenny Hansen, she said, the team almost flipped a switch on floor exercise last week. They had their season high on this event and just got it together, but she is certainly hoping that they can continue that consistency and building those high floors. with your chest and then that double tuck just kicks open like right before her feet should have. I would like to see her land with her head and chest up. Nonetheless, a hit routine to start off things for Minnesota. Meanwhile, back over on Dean, Michaela Curtis gets a career high, 9.825. Sarah Hargrove, she had an outstanding bar routine. So they can keep things rolling here. They Sarah Hargrove puts pressure on. with that risky mount, man. I'm all about risks, but I feel like right in the beginning, it's nerve wracking. Unbalanced game judges are looking for the connections between acro skills, leap skills, jumps, dance turns, and then of course, the lack of balance checks. You want to see someone rock solid. You don't want to wobbles or bobbles or anything like that. Very difficult. Ready for the 
dismount. Gainer backpack off the end, twist it. Two for two on stuck landings. Here's the mountain you're talking about, Alicia. There's so much going on here, kind of scary. I would be so afraid. Like she even checked, she's like, okay, is my distance okay? Because it, you're going in blind. Oh, and then she, she muscles it, makes it sure she doesn't get off the beam. Looks like she overdid it. She a definitely bit. over rotated that just a tinge. So each team starting their rotation with 9.825s. Allie Sonier, second spot for this. rotation when Nebraska puts the pressure on. Minnesota has answered. That last connection tumbling pass. We round up the hand for one and a half. The punch leg. Almost towards the end of that floor, but made it work. Nice job from Alexonia. Sarah Hargrove, the second gymnast up for Nebraska, also a career high, 9.825. So a pair of 9.825s now. Sienna Krauss, who is currently your leader in the all-around. Okay, so turn. Front arrow, two back handspring. Small bit of balance check there. Last week, the senior out of Fargo, North Dakota, had a season high in the all-around. Trying to top that in on pace to top that today. 39.375. Jump toss. So two feet landing. Gain her back. Oh, full twisting back pipe off the end of the beam. Didn't get the stick, but that is a difficult dismount. You need a lot of speed and momentum to get that all the way around. So it's like a, a beginning of a front aerial, but with a landing of a front tuck. It's very unique, different. You don't see a lot of athletes doing it. Back over to floor exercise, Ali Sonier in 9.875. That is her career high. Three out of four routines we've seen this rotation are career highs. Now this is Abby Nyland. Freshman out of Rogers, Minnesota, and Twin City Twisters gymnastics. First tumbling pass. Round off that handspring, double pike. Big height on that skill. Pass coming your way. Round up, whip back, one and a half front tuck. Switch side, straddle hold.
Rice for her last tumbling pass. Looking to finish this retreat strong. Round up by Hanson, double tuck. Finishes it on two feet. So back and forth, both of these teams get it right here in the third rotation. It is going to be Oof. interesting, no doubt, down the stretch. This week in our Super Tuesday doubleheader at 7 Eastern, it's number 5 Kentucky and number 21 LSU. Then it's the number 2 Duke Blue Devils. They square off against number 16 Louisville. Catch it all on ESPN and the ESPN app. Now senior Megan Schweighofer. She is your 2018 Big Ten All-Around Champion. Some injuries and, and some nagging things she has been, not doing all around this season, but she is so vital for this team. She can put up some big numbers on a couple of events, and she's going to be able to do it. step out, lay out two feet. Very difficult acro series. The judges are being very nitpicky. They say that is actually a back pike and not a layout. She's not reaching that tight, laid up arc position. Beautiful lead connection, ending it with a switch half to beat jump. Sienna Faust is scoring 9.875. Abby Nyland will run four exercises 9.25. And these scores are going back and forth, actually tied within this rotation. And so Florida is tied with Nebraska down to Double pull to a stick. Wasn't a stick though. Wow. A little. I, we're gonna have to go. We might have to go to the tape. <laughs> that difficult acro series. The back handspring step up. They're gonna say it's a back pike. I call it a layout. But ideally, you want to see a perfectly straight, tight body. No piking in the hips. But then that dismount. The double pull. Video doesn't lie. Now, was it a slide together or was it a hop slide together? Forward, unfortunately. You can move your heels together as long as your feet don't move, but if you hop and move them, then it doesn't count as a stick. And this is Anna Loper. She's also an all-around contender. She's currently sitting at fourth, a little over two tenths behind the leader. So the all-around competition is still very much up for grabs. So another great routine in this rotation. Another look. Opened up that first pass with the front layout to front one and a half. Nice connection pass, getting some bonus Ooh. points. Then ending with another Rudy. <laughs> They're not the flashiest routines or the highest difficulty, but hits are hits. And if there's not a lot of deductions, there's not much the judges can take away from them. Expect another good score there. Megan Schweighofer, 9.875. Missouri, golf champion in 2018 in the Big Ten, and two-time All-American. Very important here, late in the lineup for Nebraska. Ooh, a fall on the lead. And on cue. That is Nebraska. an unfortunate mistake, but look at those scores, all above a 9-8. So this cannot be a catastrophe for Nebraska, but Sierra Hassel, she better have her gay face on because they need to hit from her. 
front arrow to beat jump. Switch leg to split jump. Side note, obviously, we're focusing on the team competition floor. Houshin was actually your leader in the all around. I may have made a mistake earlier, but that is certainly going to take her out of contention for the all around title unless the other three competing for the all around make mistakes. Finishing team were very strong, even though she had that fall in her series. The rest of her team was pretty. Pretty great. There was no really other mega deductions. Shifted her weight back. Instead of keeping her weight in her front leg, which should be her balance leg, she moved her weight into her back foot, which off, anything goes at that point. You can't square your hips. You can't save it if you don't have a balance in you, one of the legs. At you run out of room, and it's curtains on the balance beam. Now back over to floor exercise on a low break, 9.825. This is Lexi Rambler. We talked a lot about her. She is one of those franchise-changing athletes. She's a homegrown kid out of St. Michael, Minnesota. That was a beautiful jump. It was a full-twisting ring jump. Looked like a split jump with a ring. Opened up with a big double pike. Almost got that back for that bounce, but she, like a wide receiver, felt the line and kept it right in.
side straddle pull. Sierra Hassel for Nebraska in the anchor position of 9.85, waiting for Paige Williams to score. We'll let you know when we come back. And when we do come back, Alicia and I will dive deeper into the Big Ten. You are watching College Women's Gymnastics on ESPN. Another ACC Big 12 Big Monday doubleheader. It's number three Virginia, number eight North Carolina at seven Eastern. Then it's number 13 Kansas squaring off with TCU. This week in our Super Tuesday doubleheader at seven Eastern, it's number five Kentucky and number 21 LSU. Then it's the Zion Williamson number two Duke Blue Devils as they square off against number 16 Louisville. Catch it all on ESPN and the ESPN app. News and notes around the Big Ten Conference in women's gymnastics. We came into this this weekend with three undefeated teams. Now we are down to just two. Maryland takes out number 20, Ohio State. And it's the Terrapin season high overall score. Meanwhile, Illinois defeats the Spartans. Mary Jo Otto takes the all-around title for the Illini. Some of our Big Ten weekly honors, Alicia. We get to be great with the presence of Lexi Rambler here tonight, who is one of the gymnasts of the week. Gabrielle Douglas from Michigan State University is the specialist of the week. Colby Miller is the co-freshman of the week from Ohio State University. And Addie DeJesus, Nebraska's own co-freshman of the week. January 12th, UCLA gymnast Caitlin Ohashi showed the world what fun, joy, and competitive spirit looks like. Her contagious choreography and difficult tumbling passes scored a perfect 10. That routine has captured the attention of more than 42 million viewers on Twitter alone. Number three, UCLA, one of the most exciting, charismatic teams in the entire collegiate gymnastics. They will be traveling to a very tough place to win. Number 15, Washington, that's going to take place. There's a lot of snow in the area, but it is a go. Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. That UCLA versus Washington meet is Lincoln. already on. Got a little bit of work to do. Somebody else post. Just a little under .5 behind the visiting Golden Gophers. It should be an exciting final rotation. And in that final rotation, Big Ten Gymnast of the Week. Lexi Rambler, but, you know, Minnesota has to finish on the beat. The Cornhuskers will be on the floor. The Taylor Housie and her squad this will try to make the top spawn beat. The pommel horse is like the women's bounce beam. A lot of men fall on the pommel horse. A lot of women fall off the bounce beam. The stretch. Obviously, the team competition is interesting, but. Lexi Rantler, she has won five all-arounds in a row. That is in jeopardy. She's tailing, she, trailing Sienna Krause from Nebraska going into the last rotation. Do you think she gets it done? She's only trailing by one ten, so that's literally like a step or a you know not great leap on floor. So I don't know. Nebraska's been struggling on floor, so I think both these teams just need to hit. They may not be the prettiest for teams, but if they both hit, it's going to be a very close competition. There's your third place gymnast, Anna Loper. She's waiting for maybe one of those top two gymnasts to have a little bit of a slip up. 
Maybe a call that she will move into that all-around spot. We saw Nebraska last week, Alicia. They struggled a little bit on Florida sides when they had a chance to win the meet. Here they are trailing going into the final rotation, but certainly with Minnesota on beam, anything can happen. But Nebraska really needs to put it together at an important time. You know, I watched them in warm-up, and, and it wasn't a great warm-up. And I'm watching them again in their 30-second touch. And the faces of the girls that are in lineup, like, aren't great. They look like they're struggling. They're frustrated. They need to loosen up a little bit. Look, you can have a bad warm-up and still have a, go have a great competition. So they can't get in their heads, and I think that's what they're doing. As we see Minnesota following up, you can see their lineup right there. You, you mentioned how you warm up versus how you compete. I talked to Coach uh, Jenny Hansen from Minnesota before the meet. She said that exact thing. She goes, you know, sometimes you just don't know. You have a bad warm up and a great meet. You have a great warm up and a bad meet. And I said, how was this warm up? She goes, well, it was kind of mediocre. But the last time they had a mediocre uh, warm up, they had their best meet of the year. So we'll see if that pans out. Head coach Jenny Hansen, now Nebraska Cornhuskers, they know they just have to let it fly. They really just need to pull it together, have a little fun, because the whole reason we do this is for your love of the sport. So you can't get too serious, you can't get too down on yourself. You need to let loose a little bit. And here we go with Ali Sonia, the leadoff position for Minnesota. It's such an important spot on all the events, but nowhere is it as important as it is on the balance beam. With that first hit, and you just take a little bit of pressure off your teammates. Rock solid back handspring line step up for her Afro series. Deep jump. You split three quarter. Allie is a Sussex, Sussex, Wisconsin native, comes out of the floors of Academy and Gymnastics. Standing back left, step out, soft back leg on that. They're going to give her a little bit of deduction for form, but very difficult. You don't see many athletes just do a standing leg step out for fun. Back handspring, one arm back handspring, one and a half. Very unique dismount, but she nailed it. That was a solid set for the leadoff for the Gophers. And that is so big for them because they have a comfortable lead. They just have to stay on it. That beautiful acro series. And then that standing lamp step up. Loose back leg, but it was, it's a tough skill, and she does it very well. That is going to be a big first score for the Minnesota Gophers now for Nebraska on floor exercise. Senior Caitlin Oral out of Blue Springs, Missouri. She has not competed yet this year. She had an injured knee. She was cleared a couple weeks ago. She is back in the lineup. Caitlin is quite a young lady as well this past summer. She was busy, went on a mission trip with her church to Bogota, Colombia, was part of the children's ministry team, went to local schools, parks, after school programs, and in addition to performing some skits and dances, they delivered a message of hope. A fine young lady and doing some great things on and off the gymnastics floor. She is a kind of representative of a lot of these athletes, student athletes in college, doing so many great things and not just great athletics. And this is 
This is something you don't like to see if you're a coach, when the judges get out of their chairs, bring the paper to the middle, and start the deliberations. So the scores need to be within a certain degree for each judge. And if there's a big variance, then they have to have these little conferences. And look, Jenny's not having any of this. She's yeah. like, ladies, sit back down. Let's get this together. That's and not her happy face. No, definitely that. not. But it's a struggle for the athlete who has to go next because you're focused, you're ready to go. And then all of a sudden, you're, you get thrown off your game a little bit. Oh, when more Blue Jackets get together, that's even a worse sign. We'll see if... Uh... Jenny's still not having it. Love it. She's like... Can we uh, just figure this out very quickly? My guess is they're debating a value of a skill, maybe a, a leap that had a turn to it or something. You remember the routine better than I do, but, but it looks like they're debating start value, which to Jenny, I would be concerned as well because she hit the routine. It, it seems like it should be pretty black and white. My guess would be, it would be she had, no, it wouldn't be that because she had three two back answering and you're allowed to do a skill twice for and receive credit for it. So the series, she did back answering left, step out the dismount, she goes, Back handspring, step out, one arm back handspring, dismount. So that shouldn't be an issue. There was only one turning leap, which was a split three quarter, which she got all the way around. I'm not sure what they could be even debating over. And then I don't think Jenny quite understands either. But we shall proceed. Mary Portland Downs, the junior from Lake Elmo, Minnesota. She's the second gymnast up. Actually, a slight change in the Minnesota lineup earlier in the week until today. It looks like a 9725 for Ali Sonia. The judges clearly saw something I think we did not. So an opportunity maybe for Nebraska Caitlin Oral, a 9.825. So in theory a tenth that the Nebraska Cornhuskers picked up. And now I'm being told it's lowered even more to a 9-7. I say in theory they picked up a 10th because they do get to drop a low score. So Minnesota with that 9-7, I'm sure they don't like to drop that score. But again, five tuners left, it puts the pressure on them. And how hard is it, Alicia, to sit through the entire competition? You only compete on the last event. That last event happens to be beam, and here you got to be ready to go. It's a definitely, you have to be mentally tough and just keep your cool. You don't want to give him anything away. So she's looking like she's rock solid, not phased by the weight at all. Granted, she waited the whole competition, so I guess if it gets a little bit longer, it wasn't that big of a deal. You gotta be a microwave. You gotta heat up quick. Side note, I am being told now that the quarter tenth was added back to Alexonia's score, so it is a 9.725. We'll get back to you if it changes again. Pat Trump, Ariel, back full to toe raise? I'm not even sure if that was a foot move. It looked like it, it, looked like it might have been a suck leg. She, she paused long enough, but did she have control? I think it's the question. There's the connection, and here's the back pull. Oh, that small feet scooch together, coming together. It's unfortunate, because that was a nice routine. So, we mentioned Caitlin Oral's score of 9.825. This is at nearest to Jesus. In the second spot, a freshman with the pressure on, trying to fend off the Golden Gophers here at home. Uh, uh. John's dancing in the seat over here. Triple pull, a little too much power. She pipes that down, causing her to bounce backwards. Now, very critical. I think she stayed in balance. I did see the judge in the background raise a, raise a hand, which a tenth makes a huge difference here. This competition is going to get tired. Mm -hmm. You have to keep in mind, it's, all, it's a tenth for just going out of bounds, not counting the steps that you take to get out of bounds. So those can add up very quickly. One and a half front layout step out. Addy has a lot of power just looking for that fine-tuning and control of those landings, and then her scores are going to skyrocket. And that is one thing that Heather Brick did say about Addy, is that she comes in from a smaller program, a little bit raw, needed some polish, but she has that power. She has those intangibles that sometimes you really can't coach. Last tumbling pass. 
Round up that handspring, double pike. Nailed it, definitely had more control on that landing. So we have a few deductions for that first tumbling pass, unfortunately, and then that it's a very difficult and E-value skill to triple fold. One flip with three twists. Did she stay in? Watch real close on the right side. She stayed in. Her foot touched the line, but it did not cross over, so she's safe on that front. But the mat also slid back yeah, when she I, stepped. So, I think that mat helped her, though, because I, I don't think you can project the line through the mat. Now back over to Beam. Mary Colin Downs got a 9.825 in the second spot. Now this young lady, Ivy Lou, she is something special. She's number six in the country on me. She has scored a 10 on this event. A couple more hits for Minnesota, and it is going to look very improbable for the Cornhusker to come back. I can't step up. Way out, step out. <laughs> Cakewalk. Jenny Hampton said Ivy Lou kind of brought that elite attitude to the Minnesota program. She was part of the elite program in Canada. Came down and been something special like Alexi Ramler to this Minnesota program. She's very efficient, comes into the gym, does her job, doesn't waste time. She's in and she's out. And that's something that the coaching staff in Minnesota really love about her. Making her side funny. Oh, so much air time on that full. It's unfortunate she needed to lift that chest up, but that was so nice. She floated that, and you could tell she was eyeballing that floor and wanted that stuck dismount. The acro series just spot on. Not even a slight balance check. On floor for Nebraska. Look at those feet. Like, you grab that for dear life. They're like bird claws, like holding on to that balance beam. I know that's not the most flattering way to describe it, but that's the most realistic way to tell you what it's like. I think accurate. Some call it pterodactyl feet, which is even better than my bird claws, I think. Here we go with Megan Schweighofer trying to make some magic for Nebraska. <laughs> Full twisting double back. And nearest to Hayes, second up for Nebraska, 9.675, so a low score. They absolutely cannot count that score if they hope to catch Minnesota. Tumbling pass. Front layout. Front full. Teammates in the corner loving it. Knowing that this should score decently well. Just tossing off dollar bills at the end of that floor routine. So Megan Schweiho for a nice job. Ivy Lou on beam, by the way, 9.825 for Minnesota. That nice connection <laughs> pass. This is where you can see her experience playing a role. The well-controlled landings, not overdoing it by any means, and not getting tents away for free. Nebraska really needs to get a tent back, maybe a little more on each routine the rest of the way. Minnesota continues on being on a loafer. It's a decent <laughs> night as well. She's an all-around competitor. Obviously behind her teammate Lexi Randall right now and Sienna Crouch, but ahead of Taylor Houchin from Nebraska. A very floaty back handspring step out, layout like step out. A little bit unsure of herself in that full turn. Cat jump. Ooh, a fawn beam. Big mistake. And the door just creeps open 
ever so slightly for Nebraska. Ellen needs to keep her composure, finish the routine strong, not, not make it worse than one mistake that she already did. It's unfortunate that was a difficult connection and she just didn't have both feet on. Ideally, you need to stagger your feet so you can get them both on the balance beam, not landing them side by side. Stuck the round up one and a half dismount. So a little bit shaky right after the fall, but then she pulled it together to finish strong. Unfortunate for the Gophers, here's what happened. The beginning's good, but then you can't leave him. She didn't even have that second foot on. It was completely on the side of the beam, and she tried to put pressure on it and then realized that there was nothing underneath it. So Nebraska's Sierra Hassel will mount the floor exercise. She follows Megan Schweighofer's 9.9. That is a clear high for Megan Schweighofer. This is, if Nebraska can win this thing, this is where it is going to turn. Right here, right now. Actually, Minnesota can still win the meet because if, if only one person falls on the beam, then they can drop that score. But it would be trouble if another person fell on the beam. If they hit as well, they will not have to top count Anna Loper's fall. So, Minnesota is still in control, but certainly a little more precarious. <laughs> See, Anna Loper got a 9.025. Wolf, wolf. Two back shoulder roll. That doesn't count for any bonus, but it just looks cool. really well. Clean tumbling, nice landings. Team knows it too. Nebraska's chipping away at the Minnesota lead. They're feeling hope. Chance of go big red in the Devaney Center. They're getting some momentum. A back over a balance beam, a freshman in a clutch situation to rock. Tiari Solid. <laughs> Every wobble, every mistake, every step for Minnesota at this point with that fall is going to bring Nebraska just a little bit closer. Back hands can step up, back hands can step up, layup step up. Small balance check. Very difficult for your Apple series. You try to tell Tanya Hanson that was a small balance check. I think she's got a hot flash in the sideline. <laughs> Apparently my hot flashes are contagious. In her back pipe off the end. Didn't get that stick. A couple of clear errors, a few tenths off. That's probably not going to be a huge score. See what the judges do. One more look at the acro series. That front foot was not centered on the balance beam, but she she didn't fall, so she stayed on. So realistically, it's not huge deduction she's getting. It's small here and there, but it's just how small the judge is going to give her. That'll be interesting. Now your all-around leader going into the fourth rotation. This is Sienna Kraus. She's a 9.95 clinch the all-around, but you know she's got bigger things in mind. She wants to catapult this Cornhusker team to a big comeback win. Front double throw, front layout. Beautiful, beautiful first opening pass. She was an All-American on this event in 2018. Swoop side, straddle full. Nebraska Cornhuskers leading into Sienna Krause's floor team, Sierra 
Castle matches. Megan Schweigel first 9-9. Nine, nine. Tiari Salas, by the way, from Minnesota. Her Beaver team just in a 9.775. Minnesota is counting two scores in the 9-7. This is going to be really interesting. Last time I had front one and a half back layout step out. That was an awesome floor game. And with the momentum that Nebraska has, I will be shocked if this is not a 9 9 or better. Man, the pressure is getting on to the Gophers big time. Very difficult opening pass. Front layout, double full to front layout. So it's a front layout with a double full twist to a punch front layout, and then she goes on to another connection pass. Shows what's creative about her landing on that pass is she probably has extra power, so she just covers it up with a straight jump, and there's no deduction for that. So if you're Minnesota and you need a routine and you need a big one, who are you gonna call? You're gonna call the number three gymnast in the country on balance beam, your franchise, Lexi Rambler. Who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters! Beautiful, that came from step up land, step up for her after a series. 9775 was what the last and girl got from Minnesota on the end. Surprise that that was lower than a 9.9. Nine. That's ridiculous. Sorry, Yanga. I'm Yanga. being told that a 9.9 nine from Lexi Rambler will win the meet. Minnesota unofficially. Aerial back pull. That was a beautiful beaver team, so I would foresee her getting that 9 9. But this score is the score has been, been low, so yeah. weird. It's been Very wonky. Front aerial goes to great connection. Aerial to back layout pull. I'm going to say that's a stick. She didn't really move her feet, so. She is so clutch. Has not had a miss in the 2018 season yet. She has been rock solid. Now, Taylor Houshin. She had a struggle last week in four, and she was, didn't look overly enthused during her warm up. She had such height on her tumbling, but the rotation is where she struggled. She opened up with a big tumbling pass, ran up that handspring, full twisting, double tight, landed on her feet. Beautiful first pass. finish for Nebraska and what a run they gave Minnesota here at the end. They put the pressure on, but it's not going to be enough. Lexi Rambler gets her 9-9 to clinch the team title, but Alicia, this was pretty special. Literally, she that small hop, she knew she was close to the line. She purposely jumped a little bit to the side to stay in bounds. They're talking about it right there. The quarter the of a tenth line. hop is much better than taking that full tenth out of bounds. And you gotta tip your hat to the Cornhuskers for, for giving them a run. It looked like it was impossible to come back, but they put some pressure on. And Minnesota, even with some errors, they held it together and they get the job done as Minnesota cheers on one of their exhibition gymnasts. But it looks like Minnesota gets the job done on the road in Lincoln. We will wrap things up when we come back from break. <laughs> Nebraska and ended up 
being a close one, 196.55 for Minnesota, 196.375 for Nebraska. Started off as a route, but Nebraska worked their way back. The Golden Gophers, they were consistent, especially on floor exercise. They scored 9.825 or higher on every routine. Nebraska had a great meet, but their slow start hurt them. They did hit season highs on bars and beam, including five individual career highs. But Sienna Krause, she gets her fourth career all-around title. She, she upsets Lexi Rambler, the number nine gymnast in the country from Minnesota. Alicia, it ended up being a close competition. What was the difference between the two teams? Unfortunately, Nebraska gave it away on that first event, having to count to fall with one of those one and a half that they got sat down. And Minnesota just kept their calm. They were consistent, they were clean, and then Lexi Rambler put up some of those big scores that helped this team seal the deal tonight, basically. So it's the dog Looks like there's a lot of Gopher fans it was an exciting one. Nebraska. The final score, Minnesota 196.55. Nebraska 196.375. I'm surprised because this get the was win. like a road Alicia meet Sacramone for the Gophers. Quinn, John Roethlisberger, thanks for watching everyone. And so long from Lincoln, Nebraska. Hit the big red button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And hit the bell notification to be notified when I post more videos. When I get to 1K subscriptions, subscribers on YouTube and qualify for monetization, then I'm going to have a giveaway where... Somebody will get a lucky gift card to like Amazon or Walmart or Target. Hit the big red button and subscribe. Peace out, YouTube.